welcome to episode six of Owen's Birds. My name is Kathy Kamara. I'm in New Jersey and I'm speaking with my father, Owen Kamara, who is in Sarasota, Florida. He is a bird naturalist at Mayaka River State Park. Today we're going to be speaking about um, Sarasota birds, correct? That's right, yeah. Okay. And we're going to talk about my new uh, camera, Panasonic uh, high definition camera that uh, will, I hope, increase the uh, fidelity of the pictures that I shoot of uh, the birds. And we've got a number of birds that uh, I photographed as a test, uh, and this will, this episode will be showing you some of the birds that I am testing the new camera out on. Do you use the high def setting? Yeah, yeah, and I, there's another setting uh, that uh, keeps the camera steady, and in some cases I used it properly, and in other cases I didn't. So this is a really a, a test run. Uh, I started off in the backyard, the birds in the backyard, and you'll see some of the birds that uh, came by while I was testing. One was a red-shouldered hawk that let out quite a few squawks. Another was an anhinga that uh, constantly calls out in our backyard pond. And uh, I think there were one or two other birds that we showed. Yes, there was a limkin, the famous limkin that screeches the high heaven. Oh, that was also in the backyard, and it's uh, some footage I shot here. Then we took it to the celery fields, which is about a five-minute drive away from here, and we photographed uh, an assortment of birds, mostly some beautiful roseate spoonbills and some wood storks. I love those. And, go ahead. I love those, the roseate spoonbills. Yeah, the spoonbills are so yeah, pretty. A lot yeah. of people look at them and they say, oh, they must be flamingos because they're pink. They're not. They're rosy and spoonbills, a beautiful bird in their own right. And um, then we took it to Mayaka River State Park, where you mentioned I work uh, as a volunteer bird naturalist. And we got some nice shots of a, uh, a purple gallinol, which is, not, is a beautiful bird and not a very common bird. So we got some shots of that with some young ones. So that's what people are going to see. And remember, it's a trial run. Uh, so I'm hoping I'll learn and perf uh, perfect it as we move along. But the opportunities with this little camera are just remarkable. But I've got to learn uh, not to uh, bounce around a lot when I uh, move forward or try not to move at all when I'm uh, photographing and learn how to use the zoom properly too. And the, the, the closer I zoom, the more shaky the picture gets. So I've got to remember that too. And yeah. also, you have to move extra slow. As slow as you think you're moving, you need to slow it down even more. That's a very good point. That's something I'm learning. And i got to uh, remember from the camera to my brain uh, to uh, keep that in mind as I move forward. Because there are so many birds, and you can get so close to them with the uh, camera. But if you swivel too much, if you swing back and forth too much, it just distorts the picture. It makes it very difficult to look at. Yeah, it makes you dizzy to watch. Yeah, so what I've that. tried to do uh, is to give people an idea of some of the birds uh, that we see naturally uh, during the uh, fall months in uh, Sarasota. There are so many, and we have the wonderful luxury here of uh, being able to go birding any day, almost any day of the year. You know, your winter is still a, a really nice time of the year for us. Uh, except for a few days when it does go down around uh, freezing. But we know it's going to change. We know it's not going to stay that way for very long. And that only happens whenever you have a visitor. Only when the people come down from New Jersey do we have that problem. Right. <laughs> it just happened the other day. Yeah, when uh, son. our son and granddaughter, your brother, came in for a couple of days. They came down and first it rained for the first time in a month. And then the temperature dropped into the 40s, uh, where it had been up in the 70s and 80s, all that uh, past month. Well, How did you make the decision to get that particular uh, video camera? Well, I made that decision because it offered uh, me uh, the opportunity to see through the lens in addition to, uh, to looking through that, uh, uh, whatever that, the that thing is called. See the view, through the viewfinder. 
And that gave me a much better option because shooting through the viewfinder in very light, uh, high light uh, conditions is much easier to see than uh, looking through that uh, side panel. Also, it was highly rated. Uh, it's very lightweight, and I'm going to be able to carry it uh, with me on that trip that I'm looking forward to next October to Australia. Uh, that's going to be a month-long trip uh, traveling through Australia. And I'm, I wanted to get something that would be easy to carry with me and that would be uh, guaranteed to take good pictures. Can you take still pictures with that? Yes. Okay. Yes. So let's show a sample. Okay. So this is about an eight-minute sample, but it gives you an idea of some of the birds I see right outside my lanai uh, in the uh, pond behind our, our house and uh, birds that we see like five minutes away at the celery field and other birds that we see 15 minutes away at Mayaka River State Park. But the birds, as I said, are all around us. All right, let's roll the tape. Okay, here we go. I hope you enjoy it. Here we have the uh, celery field with an unusual assortment of uh, birds from rosette spoonbills to many woodstalks that showed up uh, in this uh, pond on the lower cell of the celery fields. It's a remarkable assortment of uh, birds, mostly, as I said, wood storks and the roseate spoonbills. Where there's food, there are birds. Those are wood storks flying, more wood storks and you see them feeding in the water. There's some other birds in addition. There are some uh, great egrets and snowy egrets, a couple of uh, ducks in there as well. Now here we have the other side of the celery field where we could get a lot closer. Those are the spoonbills that are feeding. They've got very sensitive spoonbill mouths where they can actually feel anything that they're picking up under the water and they sweep their spoonbills back and forth in the water and find all kinds of delicacies. The wood storks are preening. Quite a beautiful wing spread. I think it's about uh, six feet across when he's flying. They look so gawky on the water, on the ground, but when they fly, they are actually beautiful. See, very graceful looking in the air. Here's some spoonbills up close and personal. disappeared. I don't know where they went, but either the water level dropped or they found a better source of food, but they were gone. Now we have uh, monk parakeets, which we discovered at the Fruitville Library. Uh, they're nesting there. Uh, these are beautiful birds, but they do cause some problems because they eat the buds and the fruit of uh, fruit-bearing trees.
monk parakeets are not native to North America, but uh, they seem to be increasing in numbers down here and through other spots around the uh, country, Chicago and New Jersey and Connecticut, for instance. Now here we have a group of uh, black-bellied whistling ducks in the field behind where the wood stalks and the... Uh, uh, this is a red-shouldered hawk, an immature one, in our backyard. But this is an anhinga in the backyard, right behind the uh, hawk, and let's hear him. To keep uh, cool on a hot day, and uh, when after the anhinga. Uh, goes into the water, he's got to spread his wings like this to dry them off before he can fly. This is a female anhinga, we know because of its tan neck. A male anhinga would have a black neck. Also in the backyard, we do have limpkins. This guy was uh, walking around looking for apple snails and mussels uh, to feed off. That uh, apple snails and mussels consist of the entire diet of the limpkin. You should hear this guy in the springtime when he is uh, uh, breeding, screaming at 3 o'clock in the morning. And here we have the purple gallinal back at Mayaka, right near the bird walk. This is an uncommon bird, and I haven't seen one at the uh, bird walk in over 10 years. And it also had the added advantage of having its young, three young ones. Here's what the young ones uh, look like. There he goes. Uh, the purple gallinal is uh, a beautiful bird and it needs to have some vegetation and some food in order to uh, make its living. This, I think, is one of the more attractive birds in the wild kingdom. Uh, it, it was there uh, a few weeks ago, but I haven't seen it. I've gone back a few times and it must have moved on along with its young. So there you have it. Uh, we've had an opportunity to see some of the birds in our backyard, uh, some of the birds at the uh, celery field and at Mayaka River State Park, and also on the way to the celery fields, there's an op opportunity, to, there was an opportunity to see birds that are monk parakeets that hang around the, the uh, Fruitville Library. Uh, I don't know if they're looking for an education or, or what, but they hang around the palm trees and anytime you go to the library, you hear these birds squawking from the palm trees, but it is really hard to find them because they blend right in with the fronds. Anyway, this is an opportunity we've done. We've enjoyed uh, showing off our new camera and uh, I'll be learning as we go and I'm sure that I'll get better at it as uh, I've had more opportunity to use it. And I hope you've enjoyed watching it, and it's been a pleasure to work with you again, Kathy. <laughs> you too. Thank you. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in to Episode 6 of Owen's Birds. And we'll see you for Episode 7 soon, right? Yes. Yes. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.